Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today I want to talk to you about telescopes because many of you know that I'm a big space nerd. I studied astronomy and it's the holiday season. We get Christmas or whatever you celebrate coming around the corner and people want to buy presents. And they ask, hey, what should I buy my little kids? And you know, the thing is, the problem with telescopes is that these boxes you see in stores with beautiful pictures of nebula on the stuff on the side, they're inevitably going to be a disappointment because the photos that are on those things are never as good as what you can see through the eyepiece. I generally actually recommend starting something like one of these little backpack telescopes. And the reason is that you can get a small telescope that's not too fancy and you can use it camping, it's not a big commitment. And if you get bitten by the telescope bug, you can buy a bigger and better telescope, but you don't need to get rid of this little thing. Now, this is by Mead. It's like an 80 centimeter refractor. It uh, comes with a little tripod and stuff. It was less than 100 bucks. And you know what? I don't think you can buy it anymore because Mead is out of business. So is Orion. We've had a terrible year. We've lost some really big manufacturers of traditional telescopes. The other thing that's happened in the past few years is the rise of proper digital smart telescopes. And one of the leading brands there is Unistellar. And they gave me this. They said, hey, Scott, maybe uh, you can actually show people how this works. So what happened was, I think it was about 2017, they did a Kickstarter for a fully digital smart telescope. And it's not just digital in the old ways where it can magically point to the correct place in the sky using motors and you can find the thing and look through it and see, hmm, that's a galaxy, it looks like a faint smudge. This thing has a camera in it which will automatically add up the light, it will align the images, and as you watch it, over time, it will produce better and better images, just like you're taking a photograph. And this is a beautiful new experience because it means that those photographs on boxes of colorful nebula are actually what you will see with these telescopes. So this is the Odyssey Pro, and uh, as you can see, it's a fairly small little telescope here. I'm just gonna pop this out here. So this design, uh, it comes with a tripod. Pretty easy to set these things up. And there you have it. That's your telescope, really simple to set up. And then you whip out your smartphone you turn this thing on and it'll start talking to it. And we'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, I can't actually show you that with my smartphone right now because I've realized that I've set it up as the camera here. So I'm obviously gonna have to shoot this some way differently. So yeah, the, the actual telescope itself, if you take the cap off, you can look down inside there and see the primary mirror down the bottom, right? And here you can see a secondary mirror which is shooting the light sideways, and there's a tiny hole there on the side. That's where your sensor goes. So this is a Newtonian type telescope. Now the camera is running like a video camera, and it's constantly figuring out where the stars are moving from one image to the next. And so it'll align all those, add up all the brightnesses, and then over time, it will generate these deeper and deeper views. And typically when it's running, uh, you know, you'll, you'll look at a blank patch of sky, it'll say that this is, you know, some galaxy. And you might see a tiny hint of it there, but then once you turn on the observe button, it will uh, start to bring it out of the background. It'll emerge. It'll first be noisy and then it'll get smoother and smoother. You'll start to pick out details. And then after a couple of minutes, you might even get color. It'll switch into a mode where it's collected enough data that it can actually start to enhance the color. And I've got some videos of this in action. And by the way, if you're sort of hearing in the background, it sounds a bit windy out there. Uh, <laughs> I got this on Saturday and then atmospheric river comes in, biggest storm, first big storm of the year. It's gonna be, you know, cloudy, rainy, windy. I had two potential nights, one of which was sort of overcast. So I've had one and a half nights to view this. But yeah, this is the most perfect example of new telescope curse. And I want to interrupt my previous self here to just show, you know, set some expectations. These are images that I took on the night when we had that haze. I didn't have a huge amount of time. But first of all, 
you can tell from this image, this is the approximate field of view of the telescope. It's actually square, but they put this nice frame around it. So you can see it has a field of view that's slightly bigger than half a degree, so large enough for the sun and the moon. It has a four megapixel sensor, and it's backed by a whole bunch of smarts. Now, the atmosphere, of course, has turbulence. The images at high resolutions tend to shimmer, and it just it uses lucky imaging to figure out when the thing is perfectly in focus and combine those parts to make a better image than you would get from a traditional imaging system. And that same technique can, of course, be used to take images of planets like Jupiter. And the longer you can leave it on the target, the better it's going to get. But these are bright objects. The real impressive thing on this hazy night was being able to image galaxies and nebula. Now, I used to do some astrophotography with a traditional telescope, and the fact that I could get this image on a hazy night just sort of blows my mind. What it's having to do is do background subtraction. It's trying to you know, pick up the features, accentuate those, line them up, add them all together to improve the signal to noise, and then adjust the intensity and color curves to finally deliver an image like this, which was, again, taken through haze. And I would not be doing that if it wasn't for the weather system that was moving through. Ideally, you would be shooting under perfectly clear skies. I want to compare an image of the Orion Nebula I took with this, well, that's the one on the left, to an image that I took uh, back in 2006 using a traditional telescope. And you can definitely see these are the same object. There's obviously some artistic differences on both sides. But what I really want to stress here is the massive amount of difference in the effort that it took between the left image and the right image. So that left image, that's pretty much what came out after like five to 10 minutes of exposure. I don't honestly remember because it was about 3 a.m. I had just got back from seeing Orbital perform their uh, brown and green albums, and that was amazing. Uh, I was probably not entirely sober, but I set up the telescope, started up the app, and that was the image that I produced. The 2004 image, that was taken using an Orion 100mm refractor sitting on a Skyview Pro mount. And that's a big deal because I actually had to spend more money on the equatorial mount. You wanted a big, heavy, strong mount and a relatively light telescope to hold it stable. That package cost about $500. The mount did actually have a motor to track the sky. It didn't point at targets for me. I had to slew it to the target manually, lock it in, and then make you know, turn on the motor so it would track the rotation of the Earth. And if, if I wanted to track the rotation of the Earth, I had to make sure the telescope was perfectly aligned with the poles. If it wasn't, the stars would drift up or down over time. And the motor had jitter, the mechanics weren't perfect. So if you took a really long exposure, you would have star trails. So I got around this by taking lots of six second exposures. That was pretty reliable. I took hundreds of these per night. I had a Nikon DSLR, which I attached to the back of the telescope in the focal plane using a T-mount. So that probably brought the price tag to over $1,500 20 years ago. And so once I was done freezing my butt off, I would take all that data indoors, put it onto my PC and start processing it. Again, aligning and stacking that using free software and eventually loading it into something to adjust the color curves to produce the final image. It would take days. But in the end, I did feel uh, an insane level of pride for the stuff that I produced with this. I even got into the webcam hacking thing where you would buy these uh, Sony webcams, which had really great sensors. You'd hack them onto the end of the telescope and you could take the video, dump that raw video into a system that would look for the good frames and you would sort of get passable images of planets. Again, a lot of this is limited by the stability of the atmosphere. 20 years on, for almost the same price, the fact that I can produce this in minutes is amazing. There's no hacky tools or anything involved. It's all running on the telescope and all controlled flawlessly through the app. But you know what? Looking at images on your phone, well, why do you need a telescope for that? You could just go and download the images if you really want. There's another nice uh, thing about this design. Now, one thing that's actually really special about the Odyssey Pro and the Unistellar experience is they have an eyepiece. And this really is just like, uh, you put your eye up to this and there's a little TV screen in there, a little uh, OLED screen. And you're basically seeing whatever is on your phone. You know, when you're controlling it from your phone, you can see what the camera, the image the camera is building up and you can adjust it and tweak it in various ways. 
but say you are performing a demonstration for a bunch of uh, kids, for say from scouts or whatever, they can line up and look directly through this and they will see that. So this is something that makes, it changes the equation, right? Because it's not the only smart telescope out there, but it's the one that has this kind of cool feature. There is a cheaper version of the Odyssey, the, just the regular Odyssey, which doesn't have this. It has a slightly different sensor. There's also another more expensive version. Yeah, there was the EV scope, and then there was the EV scope too. So these are the sort of the lower priced versions that they have available. And so, yeah, of course, it comes in the backpack, which means, you know, you can throw it in the car, hike, go somewhere, and then hike up onto a hilltop like I did, and then realize that it's absolutely bitterly cold, and then take it all the way back home and use it there from the comfort of your warm house with it sitting on the roof, and you can see it all the same thing anyway, because it's intelligently sampling the sky. I literally put this on, put it outside, push the align button, and once, you know, about 30 seconds later, it aligned itself. I said, go to Orion, and it went slewed over, and then put the observe button, and literally within minutes, it was producing better images than anything I had produced with thousands of dollars of gear previously. If you want to get deep into astrophotography, this is not the thing for you. Like, if you want to get super deep into astrophotography, then you can buy very big telescopes with custom cameras and chilling gear, and you can write custom software. There's a ton of stuff you can do. This is sort of the middle ground where you want something that's easy, compact, you can bring out, something that will help you find the stuff in the sky quickly, something that will produce the good imagery. There's another thing that I like about Unistellar, and that is they have a science outreach program. So they actually work with a number of science scientists through the SETI Institute. So it turns out there's a whole bunch of scientific observations which don't need massive telescopes like the Keck or space telescopes like Hubble. They're rather boring, small, mundane measurements of things like asteroid occultations. And what you really need is lots of small telescopes. Uh, and you can work with uh, these groups. You can go and collect asteroid astrometry or detailed imagery with this thing very quickly, have it automatically upload, and you can actually be part of scientific programs. So now, having sung the praises of Unistellar's Odyssey hardware, I feel that I should point out that while Unistellar invented the modern digital telescope, they're not the only game in town anymore. And one of the bigger competitors is China's ZW Astro. They make a beautiful compact little telescope called the Sea Star. And it comes in two varieties, the S30 and the S50. These are um, they're, they're refractors. The S30 has a 30 millimeter lens. The S50 has a 50 millimeter lens. And these are you know, really small, compact, and a lot cheaper. And if you know that is what is compatible with your budget, that is fine. Unistellar's Odyssey has a bit of an advantage in terms of its aperture. It has a mirror which is 85 millimeters, significantly larger, uh, but that's a reflector. Also, it has a four megapixel sensor, whereas the Sea Stars use a standard HD sensor, and that's two megapixels. And so, between the lower resolution sensor and the shorter focal length optics. The Sea Star doesn't have the same angular resolution on the sky as Unistellar's Odyssey. And that's not going to matter for things like Orion, but it will matter for things like planets or planetary nebula. And also, uh, since you're using your phones to control these smart telescopes, you know, don't underestimate the phone as an astronomical device. Most of the good phones these days have like a dark mode or a night mode that takes long exposure and stabilizes the image. And you can get some marvelous images of the night sky using just that. When the aurora were recently visible, it was hard for me to see with my naked eye, but it was really easy to see with the iPhone. So look, the Unistellar hardware isn't that cheap. It's not something you're going to buy uh, your kids if you just want to give them something to mess around with. You know, one of these backpack scopes is great. Um, at this point, if you're wanting to buy a telescope that will actually give you the imagery that you see on those old boxes for telescopes, then you're looking at an electronic smart scope. And it's the smart place to be these days. The electronics are now so cheap so reliable, and uh, the software is great. 
producing the images that you always dreamed that you could see. You had to imagine that you could see these things, but these days you can actually take that imagery. And so this is the point in the video where I remind you all that Unistellar loaned me this telescope and if you are interested in buying one, there is an affiliate link in the bottom, in my description there. There will be a code which you can type in during checkout, SCOTT1124. And if you do this during the next week, during the Black Friday sale, not only do you get a big fat discount, but you're also going to get a free solar filter and I will get a small cut of that for my trouble. And while I can confirm this is the most fun I've had with a telescope in a long time, I cannot guarantee that when you get a telescope that the skies will be clear. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.